Hi, this is Pavan Panth, Director of Product Management at CloudSwitch. In today's video, I will cover the activation of the CloudSwitch appliance that you just downloaded and configured. This essentially entails acquiring a license from CloudSwitch. Uh, I will talk about provisioning an application in the cloud starting from scratch and booting from an ISO. The next part of the video will focus on migrating an application to the cloud. And as part of that, I'll be setting up your cloud accounts, which is essentially how CloudSwitch communicates with cloud providers. Uh, and I'll be using our sample library of ISOs and servers to showcase both the provisioning use case and the migration use case. This is about where we left off in the last how-to video. You now have an IP address for your CloudSwitch appliance, which you can use to browse to the CloudSwitch web interface. You can just go ahead and use a web browser to get to that web interface. And once you're in, we're taking you to the activation wizard for the CloudSwitch appliance. We need a few pieces of information from you here the email address you use to create your CloudSwitch Home account, the password for that account, and the password for the CloudSwitch appliance. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next here, and we'll contact our activation site to see what types of license levels you have. And you can pick a license here. And Once you pick the license, your CSA will be registered, so you're good to go. You will now be taken to the CloudSwitch Getting Started Wizard. And CloudSwitch provides you with the option to either create a new application in the cloud or provision a new application, just as you would create a new virtual machine using VMware, uh, or migrate uh, an existing application to the cloud. Um, in this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and pick the option to create a new server in the cloud. And one of the first few questions we ask you is which cloud provider you'd like to use. Uh, we support Amazon. Uh, Terramark Express and Terramark Enterprise. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick Amazon as uh, my cloud provider. And once I do that, we need some uh, credentials from you, your Amazon credentials. So I'm going to log into my Amazon account to get my um, access key ID and my secret access key. Just going to copy and paste those into the Getting Started Wizard. And I'll just take my secret access key and paste that into the the wizard here. I have also enabled all regions for this cloud account. We support all regions in Amazon and uh, continue down the path of the wizard. We test the cloud account to make sure it has the appropriate cloud resources. And once that's complete, we provide customers with options to either boot using an ISO from the Cloud Switch library or to boot from an ISO from their SIF share. And we also provide customers with the option to boot from an HTTP server. Uh, such as a mirror server, uh, as well as the option to boot from a network boot server such as a Pixie server. In this particular case, I am just going to go ahead and choose the option to use an ISO from the Cloud Switch library and continue down this path. The next step in the wizard involves uh, creating the virtual machine or application in the cloud. Uh, you need to give it a friendly name. In this case, I'll just call it Windows Server 2003. Select your operating system. Select the amount of memory you'd like the uh, server to have. Um, following this, we allow you to set up the types of controllers you want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick LSI Logic as the device that I want. You can set your disk size and a pick from a list of ISOs to boot from. Next up is specifying your boot order. Uh, CloudSwitch allows you to set the boot order for servers that you're provisioning in the cloud. Uh, so as an example, you could pick network boot and move it all the way up to the top. I'm just going to go ahead and move that back down and leave the default as CD-ROM. Uh, we also allow you to set up networking. So if you'd like a multiple NIC server to be created in the cloud, you can do that. You can generate a new Mac for it if that's what you need to do. Uh, and add as many NICs as you want and associate them with uh, networks. And the, finally, the step is to fit using our cloud fit function. This is where we pick the best combination of processors, memory, and storage, and provide your server with the best fit in the cloud. Uh, we support many instances in Amazon, all the way from um, smalls and mediums to extra larges and higher. Um, and finally, you can just go ahead and uh, hit Start. This will provision your server in the cloud and start it in the cloud. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and accelerate through that process for you. Uh, so we can get to the end and uh, watch our server starting in the cloud. The server creation process is about 95% of the way through. Our server is about to start in the cloud. I provisioned the server to boot from a Windows 2003 Enterprise Edition ISO. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and open up a Cloud Switch console to the server. The console will simply wait to connect to the server, and as soon as the server boots from the ISO image, our console will launch. It's a Java-based console, uh, so you uh, will see a handful of warnings that you just need to go ahead and say that you trust uh, content from Cloud Switch. And once your console is up, you get access to the server in the cloud. Um, this is exactly the same process you would follow to provision a server in your data center, except with Cloud Switch, we're provisioning the server for you in the cloud uh, while maintaining connectivity back to your data center and providing you with the isolation layer to protect access from unauthorized users in the cloud. Uh, I'm just going to go through the steps here of the standard Windows 2003 Enterprise Edition setup, format the partition using NTFS, uh, and just uh, go through the setup process. One of the steps involved in the setup process is restarting the server. And this will restart the server in the cloud, but you'll notice that our console stays with the server as it restarts. So you can pick your boot device as the server restarts in the cloud, and also go back to the same screens for the setup process as you would uh, if you were provisioning a server in your data center. This is very similar to that process, almost exactly the same, but you're doing it in the cloud. That concludes the provisioning in the cloud use case. The next use case I wanted to cover with you is moving an existing server to the cloud or an existing virtual machine to the cloud. I'm going to go ahead and pick a server from the Cloud Switch library, which is a set of resources Cloud Switch provides customers with in case you don't have your own virtual machine to move to the cloud. Uh, I'll pick a sample virtual machine, which is a Sugar CRM server running on CentOS uh, 5.5, and go ahead and um, select that server to move to the cloud. We will then display the server's metadata to you, and um, you have the option to change these, but we provide you with the memory for that server, cores, megahertz, whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit server. The next step in the wizard is to assign networks. Uh, to your NICs. So you could either leave the NICs as unassigned, create a new network, or add it as an alias to an existing network. In this case, I'll just add it to CSLAN and continue down the path of the wizard and fit this server, which as I mentioned in the provisioning use case, is our capability to provide your server with the best combination of processors, memory, and storage. Uh, we support uh, all Amazon instances from small and medium to larger instances as well and uh, the process of migration has started. So we're moving the server from the data center or the CSA to the cloud. And I'm just going to go ahead and accelerate that process uh, so we can uh, look at the end result. Uh, it's important to note that uh, sample servers in Cloud Switch uh, work a little bit differently. They are not uh, pushed from your data center, but they come from Amazon's S3 via CloudFront. So that makes things much quicker because we are using Amazon's bandwidth. So as you can see now, we have a running server in the cloud and available for us to connect to. It has an IP address. It can talk back to your existing infrastructure in the data center. You also have um, server lifecycle actions on this uh, server running in the cloud, just as you would for the server you provisioned in the cloud, the Windows Server 2003 uh, that I provisioned. You can open a console to the server. You can shut it down, reset it you know, power it off and, and all the other server lifecycle management tasks that you'd like. So that concludes the two use cases that I wanted to cover, which is provisioning um, a server in the cloud and moving a server to the cloud. Do check out the rest of our videos and content and feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks so much for listening.